Here's some more you won't have sent to. I said, here's some more cards. I heard you the first time. Hey, who's Agnes Potter? What's it to you? She sent you a card. Just you leave my cards alone, will You're you? You're very touchy this morning. What's up with you? You know as well as I do. Is there any tea? I've just emptied the pot. Thank you very much. That's very considerate of you. Have you been in my pockets? What did I have? Where's that money? Come on, let's be having it. I said, where's that money? Somewhere where you won't find it, so you needn't bother rooting. What right do you think you've got to start going through people's pockets? Listen, the other night you went out of here flat broke and you come back waving 25 quid. Now, I don't know where you got it. No, you don't know where I got it from because you wouldn't give me a chance to tell you. You're halfway down my throat before I'd even got a word out. Don't you dare go in my Why not? You go in my pocket. Give me a minute, get to me. Get to me, get to me. So I needn't bother rooting, eh? Well, next time you want to choose your hiding place a bit better, what's the flaming idea anyhow? I was keeping it safe. What for? So that at least there'd be something to give back. What are you talking about? Give back to who? To wherever you knocked it off from. And who says I knocked it off? Oh, I wasn't born yesterday. Where did you get 25 quid from? I'm getting this straight for a start. I didn't knock it off. Look, it won't wash. We've been through this too many times before. You've been up to your old tricks again. That's what you've been I tell you, I about. haven't. All right, where's it supposed to come from? Well, it's like this, see. I met a fella. And, and he said, here you are, Dennis. Here's 25 quid. Seeing as it's coming up to Christmas, have this on me. You must think I've just come over. It was a fella who sold me five nicker. Oh, well, where did you get that sort of money to lend out? Look, before I went inside last time, you know very well I had. Quite a lot of money, so... All right, you had quite a lot of money, but there's no need to go through it. You said five just now, there's a lot more than that there. Well, I took it to the dogs, it just so happens I come up. You just come up on the dogs, oh, that's new, that is. There's a first time for everything, isn't there? Oh, didn't you know oh. that? Nothing's ever right, is it? Whatever you do, you're always wrong. It's just the reason of the thing, I never heard anything so dead daft in all my life. You get your hands on some money, and what you do, you chance the lot on the dogs. Oh, you haven't got the sense you were born with. No, I've just got 25 quid, that's all. Here. Go on, take it. What's this fella called? Alf Whittle. Are you sure? Positive. Well, all I can say is, um, God bless Alf Whittle. Up me cards, will you? Who's it from? Linda. Dear ma'am. Ivan and me will be over on Friday night. We are coming by bus as trains will be crowded. Don't know what time we'll land in. Expect us when you see us. I've got you the slippers. They look very nice with fur fronts. If you haven't got me anything yet, stockings, nine and a half, would suit nicely. Love, Linda. Hey, has now kid got a cheek? Why? She sent you all this and she's posted it for the price of a car. <laughs> She did one or two little jobs that needed doing. I was just wondering if you'd had any news of Ina, uh, Mrs. Sharples. Uh, yes, Miss Nugent phoned the hospital. Oh, I'd have done it myself, but I've never learned the phone. They say she's comfortable. <clears throat> don't tell you much, do they? Oh, I don't know. I'd say that was rather reassuring. I've let her daughters know. Oh, I'm sure she'll be most grateful. Yes, and I've seen about the visiting cards. When I went in for my big job, it was seven while eight. You will see that she gets our kind regards, won't you? Oh, I will, that. Yes. I'm afraid you'll have to excuse me. I'm trying to get as much done as possible. I've, uh, I've left my assistant in charge of the shop. What with the social and the children's party and everything, it's a job in itself getting things sorted out here. I must say that this is one of the times when Mrs. Sharples could really have been some use to us. Oh, and uh, not here to help you. I suppose you wouldn't be interested in helping us, uh, just on a temporary basis, that is. Oh, I don't know about that. Just till Mrs. Sharples comes back with us, that is. I I'd have to think about it. You'd be doing us a service. And I'm sure the committee would see that you uh, didn't go unrewarded. Well, I don't know what to say. Oh, why won't they tell us what's wrong with Ina? How long would it be for? Well, that's for the doctors to say. Mrs. Shark. <gasps> 
Don't you ever do that again. You frighten the life out of me. Listen, sister, I'll frighten the life out of you if she catches you with that. Come on, hand it over. It just so happens that these are my particulars. Yes, Grandma, and it so happens that they're none of your business, so I'll thank you to hand them over. Thank you. That's right, love. You stick up for yourself. It's the only way. All I wish is that they'd let me know what's up with me. Oh, nothing for you to worry about. That doctor spoke as always malingering. It's just his manner. Don't let this get about, but I don't think he's properly qualified. I think he's one of them medical students they're letting him practice on me. Of course he isn't. Oh, well, you'll have got instructions to deny it, but you can't stop a body thinking. Then, you're quite comfortable. I don't reckon much to this mattress. I'm used to feathers. Hey, nurse. There's just one thing I'd like to know. Is this the actual bed that the Lady Isabel passed away on? Oh, love. Hello. Oh, get that coat on. Oh, oh yep. Yeah. Yes, soaking. What time is it? It's just going up to 25. What, to... seven? Yes. You haven't finished then? No, I've still got Thorburn Street to do. Oh, that's not so bad. Yeah, but there are three streets off it. Oh, I'm just beginning to wonder if the whole thing's worth it. Have you worked out how much you'll get yet? Yeah, about uh, 18 pounds. That's what I do tomorrow night as well. And tips. Oh, oh sorry. <laughs> Oh, mind you're not on a very good area for them, are you? Oh, I don't know so much about that. Anyway, I feel so awful taking them. Why, you've done the job. Yeah, but, well, last year, most of the people who gave them seemed to be the poor old things who looked as if they couldn't afford it. <laughs> Do you want a cup of love? No, thanks, no. I just wanted to get my feet warm. Oh. oh, don't make too much noise. Your father's still in bed. What time's he on again? Ten. <laughs> this house is just like a branch of the post office. <sighs> Shouldn't be every night for the sorters. The work's over now. Well, you can't go out in that court again. It's wet through. Well, I have to. I'm nothing else. I'm not wearing anything that matters in this weather. Well, what about that old court of your father's? You mean the one I wore for the post last year? Have we still got it? Oh, it's in the lobby. It's never been worn since. I'll just go and get it. It's better than nothing. And nobody will be looking at what you're wearing on a night like this. Oh, oh however long can these have been there? Oh, no. Must be since last Christmas, or there was stuff in bundles in my pocket. Let me see. Whatever will they say at the post office? <sighs> Nothing. But they'll stop you, that's for sure. They won't, because look, there's some of my own cards. I must have forgotten to post them oh, last year. Let me look. No wonder your grandma was funny with you last Boxing Day. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come in, Esther. We'll keep these. I'll put them away. They'll come in for next Christmas. <laughs> Ken, have you been on your round? Yes, I've only just come in. Did you happen to see Lucille anywhere? Well, who's... You know, little Lucille Hewitt. Why, what's up? Well, I promised her dad I'd look after her. I came home at dinner time, gave her something to eat. She was as good as gold, no trouble at all. And I wasn't worried about leaving her, but I had to get back to work. Well, of course you had, love. Has she been up to something? Well, I don't know what she's up to. She's not in the house. Oh, well, don't worry yourself. She's probably out playing, you know what kids are. But she's not. I scoured the neighbourhood for her. I went to Fadders, but none of the other kids were out playing and they hadn't seen her. I went to, I went to Florrie Lindley's, I went to the chip shop, I walked right round to the sidings. You know how trains attract them? Not a sign of her. Well, I think you've done enough looking. Ah, oh, Kenneth will see if you can find her, won't you, Ken? Yes, sure. Oh, I wish you would. I only hope she's home before Harry gets back. I'm worried sick myself, so heaven knows how he'll feel. <laughs> We're going on well, half past eleven tomorrow. Christmas Day is Sunday opening, and then it's half past eleven again on Boxing Day. Oh, hello, Ron. Finished for night. Are you kidding? I've a couple of hours uh, collecting at me before I finish. It's bad enough getting the money out of it. Best of times, but a day before Christmas. People we'll have enough to spend the money out at Christmas without bothering about insurance. Now, don't you start that game, or I'll take the custom somewhere else. Well, yeah. Are you telling me to spend more in here than this, should? Now, don't you just, don't you start that. If you think we just stand here while the money rolls in, you've got another thing coming. Just wait till tomorrow when the footings start. The place will be crowded out. We won't know whether we're standing on our heads or our heels. And it's not easy with just uh, one and a half people running the pub. Who's the ass? Who do you think? <laughs> I heard that, and if you... Hey, hold on. Great heavens, have you swung the Irish sea, love? Well, if you must know, I've come by aeroplane. 
And if you must open that mouth of yours, Ron Bailey, you can buy me a drink. Bye, go <laughs> man, it's the same old concept to Raleigh. Give her what she wants, will you? Well, um, I'll have a stout. Oh. <laughs> He don't say you've just come visiting. Well, uh, I have and I haven't. If you could do with me back, I... Do with your back? Let's have your case. Um, while you're up there, you can put a hot water in her bed. Eh, hey, love, I can't tell you how pleased I am to see you. I was just saying the very thought of Christmas Day is keeping me awake at night. Hey, what are you doing coming back just before Christmas? Why don't you stay at all? I have my personal reasons, Mr Bailey. And if oh, it's all just... the same to you, I'll keep them to myself. <laughs> so I just said, put in the flaisances at it. <laughs> Still, you know, there'll be a few of the old customers who'll be glad to see you back behind that bar again, eh? The place hasn't been the same since you left, has it, Danny? All right, you've said quite enough. I suppose you're still getting the same crowd in, like Harry Hewitt and that last year. Aye, aye. Oh, yes, Harry still comes in. Though I don't think we'll see much of him during the holidays. He's got his little girl at home. Oh, has he now? Then he'd be persecuted with oh, us, so he will. no, no, indeed. Lucille's a lovely little girl. Bless her heart, she's no trouble at all. Well, what do you think of the snaps? You can tell which ones I took. All the heads are chopped off. I don't know, and after all the trouble I went to finding them. Oh, I don't know. You're only trying to take my mind off Lucille, but... Oh, when you think of the things you read about in the papers. Well, just put it out of your head. You've done everything you could for her since she ran away from that orphanage. I know it's hard on Harry, but he's very lucky having somebody to do what you've done. It's hard enough running home and keeping a job up without looking after other folks' kids. And after all, you're not her mother. Well, I know I'm not, but that's no reason why I shouldn't help. And if some folk get the wrong impression, that's their fault. Now, we'll have less of that, Esther. You know very well what I mean. I'm sorry, love. I didn't mean you. But you know what some folk are. See, bad in everything. No, it's just the kitty I'm worried about, seeing she's properly fed and clothed and all that sort of thing. We all know that. Oh, is there oh. a sign? No. I went down to the Luxy to see if she'd gone there, but they hadn't seen her. Well, did you look in the bottom door? She might have looked into the nine pennies. Yeah, I tried them both. They hadn't seen her. What am I going to do? The best thing you can do is to wait till our daddy comes home. He might have some idea. What's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? That's what I want to know. Nothing's wrong with me. Well, there must be. You're not natural. Oh, look, drop it, will you? Well, he came in here this afternoon. Perfect gentleman. What's Christine doing tonight, Mrs. Arvin? He said, and all I said was, uh, I didn't think you were doing anything in particular. Well, what was the arm in there? You knew very well I didn't want to see him again, and it's no use pretending you didn't, because you did. Oh. Oh, my head. What about your head? Oh, it's aching. Something awful. Don't believe you. What do you mean, you don't believe me? If I say my head's aching, it's aching. And it is. Oh, you're only making it up to get your own way. Well, don't watch it. It won't come, so don't Oh, start. that's a nice way to speak to your mother, I must say. Oh, I don't know what Malcolm would think if he could hear you speak to me like that. Look, let's get this straight. I don't care what Mr Malcolm Wilkinson thinks. He's nothing to me. You're turning down a good chance there. What of? Of bettering yourself. Uh, <laughs> Hey, you get me that worried, you know, my head is splitting. Now you're playing up again, so I'll just stop before you start. Oh, come, look, he's here. Maybe he is. Well, I should out to him. If he wants me, he can not like anybody else does. Well, who do you think he is, honking away like that? The flipping ice cream, ma'am. Hello. Oh, you do come and see your mother sometime, then. How are you feeling? Oh, I mustn't grumble. I brought you this. Well, that's a fool of a thing to bring me. I thought you'd like it. Oh, it's very nice, I'm sure, but how am I going to carry it with me when I go? I'm the keeping you near, then. I don't know, they tell you now. See that poor soul in torment over there? They don't give her a while Christmas Eve. She could be in a better place any minute. Mm. She could about just like that, and offer a positive fact. She hasn't got one policy to her name. Mm. Hey, how's that gumball of an husband of yours? Oh, he's got flu. Oh, trust him. Oh. I've had it bad, too. Oh, so that's why you've not been here in two months. Does I imagine how I'm stuck here? I don't know, Mother. Well, don't ask me. Well, why isn't she here? I don't know. I expect she knows the way the will goes. 
Well, I'm very sorry to have to tell you that you'll none of you be collecting yet a while. Oh, you shouldn't talk like that, Mother. It's proper morbid. You know, I had three doctors around me this afternoon, and one of them was as black as a chimney bag. Oh, he was clean, you could tell. His face shone like black leading. The food's terrible. Is it? Well, they're always trying to make me eat boiled fruit. I said to that nurse, I said, it's all right for folkers like it, but I like somebody that's looked over the world. You've got it popular this afternoon, Mrs. Sharples. You've got another visitor. You're just in time for the carol singers. They'll be along here any minute now. Hello, Vera. Hello. How are you? I mustn't grumble. Well, I'll be off. Off? You've only just got here. Yes, I know, but I want a fag. Oh, go on. Oh, don't be like that, Mother. After all, you've got Martha. Oh, well, all respect to her, but it's not the same as your own. All right. If that's how you feel, I'll stop a bit longer. Oh, don't put yourself out about me. All I remember is my mother used to say that if God had intended women to smoke, he'd have put chimbles in their heads. Of course, they were more fond of pipes in them days. I'm sorry I'm a bit late, but I was delayed. Oh, it's very good of you to come at all. You're in everybody's thoughts, Eda. Miss Nugent said to me only this afternoon, we must all remember Mrs. Sharples in our prayers tonight. That was when we were setting up tables. What tables? we glad tidings. What were you doing there? Helping out. Helping out? So that's your game out to cut my job, are you? Here I lie and told me to you, moving. Oh, I should have known all last week you were talking about your rent going up. You, 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 Martha Longest, you snake. I know what you're after. You're after me vestry. Oh. What you mean? An uncle of mine never went to church, chapel, or meeting on account of what someone said to him one day. Well, what was that? Well, it was like this. He was walking along. Oh, it's all right, anyway. Hmm. Where do you want to sit? This will do. Oh. What do you fancy? I'll have a lemonade chapel, please. Come on, girl. Yeah. Yeah. What about a gin and French? I don't want a gin. I'll just have oh, a lemonade chapel. All right. I'll right. see if I can get some service. Well, in that case, I don't... A pint of bitter and a lemonade shandy, please. But that wasn't the end of it, not by a long time. A call. pint of then... bitter and a lemonade shandy. Please. Same again, Jack. Oh, yeah. Yeah. What was it now? Hmm? What was it now? A pint of bitter and a lemonade shandy. Half a bitter and a lemonade a shandy. Oh, no, oh, a pint. <coughs> Be up in the chicken. That'll be two and three, please. Thanks. Keep going. Well, that's made me nice. Oh, what has? I'm coming to money. He's given me problems. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks very much. All right. Oh. What is it all right? Not bad. This isn't all. Isn't it? Oh. You're cheerful, I must say. Do I have to be? Look, what's the matter? Oh, it's not important. In a minute, you'll have me thinking you didn't want to come up with me. Ah, and you'd be dead right at that. And why did you bother? Well, for the simple reason, if I'd let you go on tooting, you'd have had the old street out. It's a nice pub, this. Charming. Look, Chris, tell me what it is I'm supposed to have done. All right, then I will. Whenever I go out with you, we never go anywhere, do we? It's either back street pubs or two and nine with the dark at the Luxie, and you can't deny it. Well, well we never go anywhere. <coughs> oh, you do when you're out with the lads, but not with me. I'm sick to death of hearing you telling me about those smashing nights out you have to go around them little places in Cheshire with Peter and Derek. And don't think that I don't know why you don't take me, because I do. Now, listen, Chris. It's rude to interrupt. I work in a raincoat factory and I don't talk far back. You'd frightened I'd show you up if we met someone. I've never heard anything so stupid in all my life. Um, yeah, well, it's true. You're mad. Yes. It runs in our family, or didn't you know that? Do you know why I came round to see you tonight? Nothing better to do, I suppose. What are you doing on Wednesday night? Well, what's it to you? What's well, the rugby club dance? Oh. I'm asking you to come. Me? Yeah, you. Oh, I don't know what to say. 
Just say you'll come, Miss Or well, would I have to wear evening dress? It'd be better. Oh. Well, when did you say it was? Next Wednesday? Yeah. yeah. Oh, well, I'll have to think about it. Oh, stop worrying the pair of you. Lucy is old enough to know her way home. How do you feel if you'd be cooped up in one of those orphanage places for as long as she has? You know, if kids didn't go to a bit of mischief, they wouldn't be kids. You're just saying that to make us feel better. Who is? Look, love, all I want you to do is to see this thing in the proper light. I mean, you've got to look at it logically. The kid ran away from an orphanage to come home, so she's hardly likely to run away from home now, is she? I don't suppose she liked being cooped up in the house all afternoon, so she just stopped out of it, that's all. But don't worry, she'll be back. As like as not, she's scraping her heels now along Rosamond Street. Do you think that... Now, how do we know who it is until we open the door? See what it is, either way. Oh, Harry, it's you. Oh, Harry. Is she back? No. I thought I'd make sure she wasn't here before I went to the police. Oh, Harry. What else can I do? There's nothing else you can do, lad. You've done the only sensible thing you can. And don't get worried just because he mentioned police. If Lucy was lost, they're the ones to find her. Oh, I thought you said she knew her way home. Do you think I ought to get back, just in case she comes home? Oh, it's all right, love. Your Ken's keeping a lookout down the street, anyway. Do you want to get off to the police station straight away, or would you fancy a cup of tea? It's fresh brewed. No, I don't think I'll bother. Thanks very much, Ellen. <laughs> Just where do you think you've been? I can't tell you. Well, you can't, can't you? No. Well, you just listen to me. You're not going to give me what for, are you? Where have you been? I don't want to tell you. You've got to, love. I've been Christmas shopping. What with? A card from my grandma this afternoon sent me a pound note. What have you done with it? Spent it. On what? Presents. We must be having a look at them, then. Should really wait till Sunday. Half for you. Oh, I was just in need of a nice bottle of scent, too. Oh, thank you, love. I'm sorry, but I haven't bought anything for you, Mrs. Barlow. <laughs> oh, that's all right, love. Oh, Jack around, huh? Apply liberally. Oh, whatever is it? All right. Tried to get you whiskey, but the man said to come back when I was 18. <laughs> <laughs> what are you rummaging for, anyway? I brought you something. No, I don't want you till Christmas. No, it's not your present, it's something else. Oh, you want to keep your money in your purse, young woman, and... Save it for later on, you'll be needed in months to come, instead of splashing it about on Christmas presents. It's nothing much. You shouldn't have done it. I've got plenty of this stuff in. I've been in the club for it this Christmas. Hey, wait till tomorrow night. I've got a bottle of that liqueur. Where spray. have you got for me? Hey, just hold your hurry. Unhide this for me. It's Ivan. Where should I put it upstairs? Oh, don't be so daddy. He's up there. Go and put it in the scullery cupboard. Like a lot of kids. How are you getting on with him? Ivan. Oh, it's unbelievable, honestly. He's tickled pink about the idea of a baby. He just wouldn't credit it. He spent all his time looking for second-hand prams. He's a bit ahead of himself, isn't he? Don't even show yet. Don't be so common. And don't stand there watching the fire go out. Go and bring some coal in. Well, who said the miracles hadn't stopped? Did you hear? Did you see that? He went out to get some coal in without any back chat. <laughs> I suppose that's his Christmas present to me. <laughs> I'm glad you're getting on so well, though. Uh, there's a copper at the front door. Oh, uh, what's he collecting for? He's not collecting anything. He wants a word with Dennis. 